dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Pat O'Brien in A Man of Influence. United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now here is your host, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you very much, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars. For all your motion picture favorites, join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is that great film favorite, Pat O'Brien the title of our zany comedy, A Man of Influence. We'll have the curtain for Act One in just a moment, but first, here is Wendell Niles with an important message. Choose the career that offers all five. The U.S. Army offers you these five keys to a successful future. One, a career of service to country. Two, the right kind of job for you. Three, continuous training for planned advancement. Four, lifetime security. Five, travel and recreation. Yes, men, choose the career that offers all five. Find out about the five keys to a successful future at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Now, once again, your host, C.P. McGregor. The curtain rises on Act One of The Man of Influence, starring Pat O'Brien as Bill Archer. You all know fellas like Bill Archer. He's the guy who lives next door to you and thinks pretty much of himself, especially in front of his long-suffering wife, Marge, and his son, Junior. Right now, the Archers have just finished lunch, and Bill is saying... Marge, that was a swell lunch. Mm. Mm. Thank you, dear. Now, if you and Junior will remove your overfed bodies to the living room, I'll clear away these dishes. All right. Come on, Junior. When your mother speaks like that, she means business. Oh, gee, Dad. Can I try once more to bounce my spoon into my glass? Oh, now, look, you, you'll never do it that way, son. Hey, give me that spoon. Okay. See, you've you got to come down with some force. Then the spoon will jump right under the glass. Now, watch. Uh-oh, Mom's brand new drinking glass. Bill, did you ever just break something? No, dear, I broke a glass. Oh, no, not one of my new glasses. Yes, dear. Oh, Bill. Come on, Junior, let's get out of here. You see, women don't understand how we men do things. We men? Does that include me? Yes, of course. Gee, Dad, why is it I'm always a man when you do something wrong, but I'm just a kid when I do something wrong? Well, son, that's because, uh, that, uh, well, uh, that... Say, Junior, did I ever tell you the story about the time I captured the gorilla in the wilds of Africa? Ooh, no. I didn't know you were ever in Africa, Dad. You didn't? Sure, sure. You know, I, I really felt sorry for that gorilla. That morning, I'd gotten up without having any breakfast, and I, well, I was feeling pretty mean. And this poor gorilla had the tough luck to run into me on a day like that. <laughs> well, weren't you scared? Scared? Huh. I just reached down, picked a man-eating crocodile out of the Amazon, and I hit that gorilla right over the head with it. But the Amazon is in South America. Huh? Uh, oh, it is? Uh, oh, well, you see, the gorilla ran quite a ways before I could catch up with him. Bill... Yes, dear? You want me to help you with the dishes? And break another glass? Oh, no, no, thanks. <laughs> but I wish you would do something for me. These books I got from the lending library are due. Would you take them back for me? Why, of course, dear. Oh, is old Miss Beamish, the librarian, still complaining about her feet and her back <laughs> and her head and everything? Oh, yes. Yes, the poor soul. You know, she asked me if you had any influence with the telephone company. Telephone company? Oh, well, I certainly do have influence, but yes, I... Yes, but she wouldn't say what she wanted. Oh, now, Bill, promise me you won't do anything rash if, if she should ask you for a favor or something. Now, honey, don't worry your pretty little head about yours truly. I'll be my usual self. That's what I'm afraid of. Come on, Junior. Want to take a walk with your old dad? Sure. Us men have got to stick together, don't we? <laughs> yeah, that's right. See you later, Marge. Hi. Bye, Mom. Goodbye, dear. <laughs> Oh, gosh, son, isn't this a beautiful day? Uh, it sure is, Dad. You know, I think this is the nicest season of the year. Yeah. You know, we're lucky, Junior. It's almost winter all over the nation, and here we are in sunny California. 
Oh, it must be bitter cold back east. But here you get up in the morning, and the first thing you see are the fragrant flowers peeking into your window. Yeah. Of course, you can't smell them until you knock the icicles off. Well, yes, at night there is a little breeze, but it's really not cold. It's just crisp. Yeah, I know, Dan. I forgot to cover up the canary last night, and he sure felt crisp this morning. Now, Junior, you're always exaggerating. All the canary got was a little chill. Uh, maybe. But when I opened his cage this morning, he flew into the pressure cooker, and he won't come out. Mm. Oh, well, he'll be all right. Oh, uh, speaking of birds, son, just look at all the birds around here, these trees. Hey, Dad, look at that one up there on that limb, the one with the big eyes. Where? Up over there. What kind of bird is he? Junior, sometimes you're a disappointment to me. You ought to know these things. Why do we have that big encyclopedia at home? To stick the bills from the grocery in. Mm, yeah, but I mean besides that. Now, uh, I've studied the nature chapter in that book, and that's the reason I won't have any trouble telling you what kind of a bird that is. That happens to be a whippoorwill. A whippoorwill? That's right. And the song sounds just like his name. Now, you stand perfectly still. I'll see if I can get him to sing. Okay. Whippoorwill. Whippoorwill. He's listening to you, Dad. I bet he's getting ready to answer you. Whippoorwill. Woo! No, that's nothing but an owl, I bet. He flew off saying who. Well, no, he just didn't understand the question, that's all. No. Come on, here's Miss Bemis's lending library. I wonder what she wants you to use your influence for. I don't know yet. But I'm sure I can help her. Well, let's go in. Okay. But I hope she doesn't talk our ears off about her aches and pains. Oh, hello there, Mr. Archer. Hello, Junior. Hello, oh, Miss Bemis. Good morning, Miss Bemis. How are you on this bright and cheerful day? Oh, I ache all over. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Uh, what seems to be wrong? I just don't have any pep. Uh, have you ever tried those breakfast foods that give you pep, Miss Bimmy? Oh, yes. I've been eating a breakfast food for weeks now. It's supposed to pep you up when you get your money back. Did it work? No, and I ate 20 packages, too. Well, at least you can get your money back. I haven't got strength enough to carry back all those empty boxes. Oh, I almost forgot. Here's the two books Marge has been reading. She said they were fine. Oh, thanks. She also said you wanted me to do you a small favor, if I can. Oh, yes. Maybe you could help me. You see, my telephone is up on the balcony of the store. Yeah? And every time it rings, I have to go up there to answer it. I see. I bet I go up those stairs a hundred times a day, up and down, up and down, down and up, up yeah. and down, yes, down uh, and up. Miss Beamish, uh -huh. uh, yes, yes, that is a problem. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe you could get a long piece of cord on the phone that would reach downstairs. Well, that's why I'm so tired, you see. Up and down, down and up, up and down. Down and down. up, everybody out, main floor. Well. Junior, don't be impertinent. Huh. Well, anyway, that's what I wanted to ask you about. I know you have a lot of influence in the community. Oh, well, yes, I suppose I do have. I know the phone company will connect a long cord for me, but they'll charge me extra, and I just can't afford it. So if you could use your influence, I'd be ever so grateful. Miss Beamish, your worries are over. As you so aptly put it, I am a man of influence, and well, I am... I'll say Dad has influence. He used some on the butcher yesterday. Uh, Junior, never mind that. What happened with the butcher? Well, Dad was getting tired of the cuts of meat we got at our house. Then he went down and had a big fight with the butcher. And he really told him off. Well, I guess I was kind of rough with him. And Dad said the butcher would have to give him the best steak in the store. Or else. What did the butcher give him? A black eye and some chopped meat. Yeah, oh. the black eye's on the quiet, son, quiet. Well, I hope I'm not putting you to any bother, Mr. Archer. Bother? Not at all. I'll get in touch with the head of the phone company. He's one of my very best friends. Oh! Wonderful. I knew you'd come through for me. Always glad to extend a helping hand, Miss Beamish. Your phone cord will be connected in no time, and it won't cost you a cent. If I do say so myself, when I guarantee to get something done, that's practically accomplished. Yeah, but until then, Miss Beamish, it wouldn't hurt if you practiced sliding down the banister. Oh, please. Junior, nobody asked you. All right, come on, we'll go back home now, and I'll make some phone calls on this deal. Goodbye, Miss Beamish. Goodbye. Oh, 
you, you wonderful man. Oh, Bill, I know you mean well, but, well, darling, you're always telling people that you can help them out of difficulties. What's wrong with what I told Miss Bemis? In the first place, you don't know anyone with a phone company. Oh, why do you always handicap yourself? Marge, I may not know anyone at the phone company, but it's a sense they know me. Oh, that's an additional handicap. But Marge, Miss Bemis is all alone there in a the little lending library, and, well, she is sort of helpless, and she really needs somebody to look after. And since this is a job for a man, naturally, she turned to me. That's what I mean. Doesn't she know any other men? Oh, darling, you're dealing with a phone company, and you know you've had some trouble with them yourself. Oh, you mean the bill for December? I paid that. Well, now they seem to want their money for December 1949. Ah, that's so unreasonable. Well, I am a little behind in my payment. Oh, don't forget, you're the one who's asking a favor, dear. Yeah, well, that's right. Well, I'm a man of influence around here. Why should I be afraid of them? I'm a taxpayer. I'll go out in the hall and call the manager right now. Sure glad I had this payphone put in. There's a lot of argument on long-distance calls. Please. Oh, hello, operator. This is Bill Archer. Well, we haven't had a call from you in a long time. My, that coin you dropped must have made a big noise in that empty box. Operator, I didn't call you for any of your smart remarks, thank you. Get me the manager of the phone company. What's the matter? Are they after you to pay the bill again? Never mind. Just get me the number. One moment, please. I'll connect you with our Mr. Wagner. Mr. Wagner? Yes? This is operator 26. Any trouble developing today? Not so far. Starts now. Here's Mr. Archer. Operator, will you please keep out of this? Hello, Mr. Wagner. Yes, Mr. Archer. What can I do for you? Well, I have a lady friend. Uh, uh, well, her name is Miss Bemis, and she's rather shy. And uh, uh, what I mean is she has a telephone, but she's not very happy the way it is now, and what she'd like is a new connection. Well, that's very interesting. And I happen to be a married man. No, 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 no. You don't understand. I, I didn't mean that. You see, she runs the lending library, and her phone is upstairs, and she'd like to have it fixed so she can bring the phone downstairs. Oh, I see. Well, all she has to do is put in a request for a long cord, and the company will bill her for it. Yes, yes, I know. She, she could do it that way, but, well, I was hoping I could use my influence with it so the phone company would do it for nothing. You still there, Mr. Wagner? Yes, I'm still here. Well, what's the matter? I was just checking over your account, Mr. Archer. You realize you haven't paid your bill for December... 1949? Oh, oh, that. Oh, look, Mr. Wagner, about that bill. Uh, the reason I haven't paid it before is because I have a complaint to make. Complaint? Yes. You see, during that month, I made a local call to a business friend of mine, and as I understand it, I'm allowed to talk for three minutes for a nickel. That is correct. Well, the operator cut me off before I was finished. I did not. You did, too. Right in the middle of my conversation on this business deal, I was dead. Listen, you were dead on that deal before you started talking. That's not the point. I still have the equivalent of two minutes coming to me. Very well, Mr. Archer. We'll send you a two-cent stamp in the morning. Thank you, Mr. Wagner. You're welcome, Mr. Archer. Um, about that favor I asked of you, maybe the company can send someone over? Well, I'll see what I can do. Swell, swell. I'll be waiting to hear from you. So long, pal. Well, guess I am a man of some influence around here after all. Hmm. Wait till I tell Marge. She certainly will be proud of me. <laughs> We pause briefly for my story, A Man of Influence, starring Pat O'Brien, to bring you an important message from our government. High school graduates, the U.S. Army offers you a brand new career opportunity, especially designed for men who like fast action and real responsibility. Men without prior service may now enlist directly in the infantry, field artillery, armored cavalry, Corps of Engineers, or the anti-aircraft artillery. Whichever branch you choose, the Army's new career guidance plan gives you the chance of a lifetime to go up steadily and surely, as you demonstrate qualities of initiative and character. And you'll have job security that means a lot, and retirement benefits, too. Visit your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting office soon. Find out about the hundreds of career specialties which make the Army a great outfit. Find out about the exciting and important duty assignments you'll win in such fields as radar, guided missiles, or electronics. See for yourself how many recreational, sports, and travel privileges the modern soldier enjoys. You'll see why America's finest men choose U.S. Army careers. Then, make the Army your career. 
You owe it to your future. The curtain rises on Act Two of The Man of Influence, starring Pat O'Brien as Bill. Well, Bill has promised Miss Beamish she will have a long extension cord put on her telephone. But so far, he has only succeeded in getting the telephone company to agree to send someone over to talk about it. Right now, Bill and Marge are out shopping, and Junior is sitting in the front room. The manager of the phone company is just pressing the door buzzer. Coming, coming. Hello? Hello, young man. Does Mr. Archer live here? Yes, sir. Now, my name is Wagner. Your father called me about a business matter. Well, I don't usually make personal calls. I happen to go right by your house on my way home. Oh, well, that'll be right back. Uh, you'd better come in and wait for him. Thank you. Have a chair. All right. Thank you. Oh, you're a young archer, huh? <laughs> well, I guess you're getting near the age when you'll be using the telephone a lot. Calling up for dates, huh? <laughs> nah, I hate girls. Yeah, I see. Yeah. And it must be your father who's always using the phone. Yeah, he does use it a lot. But, oh boy, if the phone company ever finds out how many times he uses it when they don't know about it. <laughs> when the phone company doesn't know about it? Yeah, you see that baseball bat hanging by the, the booth in the hall? Yes. Of course, it doesn't always work. But sometimes you can lift the receiver and hit the phone as hard as you can with the baseball bat. And to the operator, it sounds like a nickel. You don't, sir? Yeah. I'm not as strong as my father. He can hit so hard it sounds like a quarter. Yeah, that must take quite a blow. You said it. One night he called New York long distance and he got blisters on his hand. He hit the bell so many times the neighbors thought he was practicing to drive an ice cream truck. Young man, this is most interesting. I happen to be Mr. Wagner, manager of the phone company. Yeah, well, you... Huh? Manager of the phone company? Yes. Yeah. What have we got to say to that? I wish I was dead. Hi, Junior, I'm back. Got to call Miss Beamish and tell her something. Where's the baseball uh, bat? Dad, not now, not now. What do you mean, not now? I got to make a... Oh, here's the bat. Uh, please, Dad, put that bat down. Please What's the matter with that... you, Junior? Have you noticed, Dad? We got a visitor. It's sitting right behind you. This is Mr. Wagner, Dad, manager of the phone company. Mr. Wagner, the phone company? Yes. Well, don't just stand there, Junior. Pitch me a baseball. See here, Archer. Your boy just told me all about everything. Now, just look at that phone. It's so bent up that we'll have to send it out to a body in Fender Works to have it straightened. Oh, I can explain that. You see, during the last earthquake, don't I... Don't give me any excuses. And as for that long cord you wanted for your friend, Miss Beamish, she'll be lucky now if she ever gets it. Good day. Oh, Mr. Wagner. Mr. Wagner. He's gone. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, Dad. I didn't know who he was when he first came in. And we started talking about phones, and naturally, I told him what fun we have here. Yeah. Oh, poor Miss Bemis. Now, oh, she'll never get her cord connected. Unless... Uh, unless what? Unless I fix it myself. Oh, Dad, you're not going to try to fix it yourself. Of course I am. Oh, Miss Bemis. Come on, come on, we'll get your little tool kit. Tell Mother we're off to Miss Bemis's. doing with all the inner workings of Miss Beamish's phone laid out on the floor? You remember which is which? As I do. Let's see. This green wire goes on the screw mark plus. Well, I know. I know the green wire goes there, but it won't stay unless you use some solder. Uh, we got any solder? No. Uh -uh. Mm, well, that doesn't matter. It'll hold just as good my way. Hand me another bobby pin. Uh, Mr. Archer... I appreciate your taking this personal interest in me, but don't you think we ought to send for a mechanic? What? And spend your hard-earned money? Not a chance. When Bill Archer's on the job, things start humming. I wish the phone would start humming so I could go home and stop worrying. Marge, please. You know very well that mechanical things have always been my specialty. Oh, I know, Bill, but this is the first time you've ever tackled a telephone. What's the difference? When we bought that new refrigerator, I connected it up myself, didn't I? Yes. Yes, for a week or so, we had the only refrigerator on the block that defrosted on the outside. Mm, uh, well, I told you I did that on purpose. It <laughs> keeps the kitchen so nice and cool. <laughs> oh, here's Junior. The screwdriver I sent him for? Here you are, Dad. Oh, thanks, son. Now, oh, oh, let's see. I got the cord attached. Now I got to figure where this plug fits. Hmm. Are you sure you know what you're doing, Dad? 
Junior, we've been all through that with your mother. Don't know why everyone seems so dubious. I can fix things. I fixed those wheels on your bike for you, didn't I, Junior? Yeah. It worked too, didn't it? Yes. No other kid I know has a bike with square wheels on it. Mm, well, I didn't have the tools I needed. But don't forget, those square wheels will come in mighty handy if they ever start building round sidewalks. There. there. Mechanism is set. Now to put the case on. There. Now, looks to me like it's ready. Oh, thank goodness. Will it work now? Of course it'll work. Miss Beamish? Uh, yes. Your phone is all set now. Well, first we'll test it. Uh, who'd you like to call? Well, old Miss McDonald just moved, and she gave me this new number. Here, I, I wrote it down. Hillside 1367. Mm -hmm. Okay. You call and surprise her. Joe's fish Move. What was that? Joe's fish market. Come on, what do you want? I'm busy. Uh, is old Miss McDonald there? Look, we got halibut, we got bass, we got barracuda, we got whitefish. McDonald, we ain't got. Oh, excuse me. Can't understand this. Uh, Miss Bemis, your friend doesn't work in a fish market, does she? Oh, mercy, no. She's a vegetarian. Oh, must have dialed the wrong number. I'll try again. What? Joe's fish market. I'm sorry, I don't want a fish market. Why? Well, what's the matter with fish? Well, nothing, really, but you I... You don't like fish, huh? You probably caused a meat shortage all by yourself. Goodbye. I'll get the operator. she will help me. Number, please. Well, operator, this is Bill Archer again. There's nothing wrong with this line. There certainly is. Has someone been fooling around with the connections over there? Well, yes, I did attach a little cord no, to the... that's what it is. Hold on. The manager of the company wants to speak to you. Go ahead, Mr. Hello, Archie. What in Sam Hill's going on over there? Oh, nothing, Mr. Wagner. I just took it on myself to hook on a little piece of extension wire, and it's possible that I made a tiny little mistake somewhere. Little and... Mr. Oh, Archie, I'm warning you, stop playing with our equipment. Now, you take that wire off and put everything back the way it was originally. You understand? Uh, yes, sir. And I mean it. Yes, sir. You've got the right number this time, Miss Beamish. Sorry if I caused you any inconvenience. Inconvenience? Somehow or other, you've cut in on our overseas cable. You fouled up the international service as far away as Hong Kong. Yay. You had Yugoslavia talking to Poland, and you've even had my mother in law talking to me. Uh, uh, oh, but, Mr. Poland, Wagner. We have a very generous and understanding company. We want people to be happy with our service. We try to make our customers happy as we can. No, yeah, but, Mr. But Mr. Wagner. Too far, Archer. We've had all the trouble from you that we want. Now, then, we'll try to straighten out this tale. But if we have the slightest bit of trouble with you in the future, We'll take out Miss Beamish's phone and yours, too. Goodbye. Thank you, Mr. Wagner. Well, Mr. Archer, who was that you were talking to? Hmm? Uh, that? Oh, well, that, that was just an official I know pretty well down at the company. <laughs> yes, he was telling me how much they appreciated the fine job I did over here. Oh, isn't Mr. Archer wonderful? Must be a thrill a minute living with a man like him, isn't it, Mrs. Archer? <laughs> you don't know the half of it, Miss Beamish. Well, Marge, you and Junior go ahead. I'll catch up with you later. All right, dear. Goodbye, Miss Beamy. Bye. Oh, Mr. Archer, I just knew a man of your influence would be able to help me. I can't thank you enough. Oh, thank you, Miss Beamish, but uh, my friend at the company wants his own maintenance men to put your cord in for you, so when they come to do it, just give them this $10, will you? $10? Yes, I want everything to be squared off, and besides that, it will more than pay for your long cord. Oh, Mr. Archer... You have a heart of gold. Yes, I know. Well, see you later. You will? Oh. Marge. Yes? Junior, wait for me. Here, Pop. Gee, Jack, you're really smart, aren't you? You fixed the phone for Miss Beamish, and you got me out of that little jam I was in with Mr. Wagner. Ah, you're a wonderful dad for a fella. Oh, that was nothing, son. Didn't I ever tell you about the time when Boulder Dan broke down and I fixed it with my own scout knife? Oh, dear. This is where I came in. Yes, sir. There I was holding back 70,000 tons of auto with my left hand and with my right hand I was keeping all the dynamos going. I tell you, it took superhuman strength, but I stood there for 12 hours until help finally came. That was my day. The Curtain Falls in the final act of A Man of Influence 
Our star, Pat O'Brien, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Here is a message from the Army for registered nurses. If you're a recent graduate in search of an exciting and rewarding career, look into the advantages of a reserve commission in the Army Nurse Corps. There are now about 1,100 openings for young nurses who can qualify for appointment. You will serve in modern, well-equipped Army hospitals throughout the United States, and you may be eligible for foreign service after one year. As a commissioned officer with the pay and responsibilities of your rank, you will enjoy nursing soldier patients and living in the stimulating atmosphere of Army posts. For full information, write the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington 25, D.C. Now, once again, your host, C.P. McGregor, and our star. Well, Pat, I really don't need to say it, but I think you know how glad I am to welcome you back to our theater. Thank you, C.P. I didn't realize how long it's been since I've done a show with you. It's been about four years. No kidding, four years. That's right. You starred on our fifth show. Mm. Well, that kind of makes me a, well, sort of a charter member. I should be a TFC by this time. Ordinarily. But you forgot that little matter of enlisting. Oh, I did that in 1917. I should have said seaman second class. <laughs> well, you can't skip drill for all those years and still make your rate. All right, I'll be back oftener. We'll be looking for you. And by the way, I'd like to talk to you about your new picture, the late Damon Runyon's Johnny one Eye. Well, C.P., this is the fifth motion picture of the really great Runyon stories. Of course, he always wrote about Broadway, that is, most always. And its people and his characters were typical of the big street. Now, in this particular one, there's a killer. That's you. Yep. And then Wayne Morris, who plays Mr. Big. And Dolores Moran, she's a striptease artist. And she's one of the most devastating dolls in the Damon Runyon gallery. No, you can say that twice. Really, C.P., Johnny One Eye, it's a powerful story. And I trust your listeners will go to see it. Our producer, Ben Borges, well, he knows how to make those Runyon characters come to life on the screen. He didn't do so badly with that cast, either. Well, I'm certain our listeners will go see it. Well, that's great. I hope they do. C.P., what is your next release going to be? Next week, Pat, and ladies and gentlemen, the very lovely Ellen Drew will be our star. We have a fine romance drama for her titled The Truck Driver and the Lady, a story of a young couple who try to adjust their lives to lowered living standards and at the same time overcome constant opposition to the marriage by their parents. Great. Great, I'll catch it, and I'll see you again soon. So long, C.P. Goodbye, Pat. <laughs> Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when Ellen Drew stars in the story The Truck Driver and the Lady. Until the next week, then, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. Pat O'Brien appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars in this program. The script was by Dick McKnight, with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. The program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.